Hey there, and welcome. We are proving Newton's second law to be true with experiment data. We're going to show you how to do the math that goes along with AP Physics 1 investigation number 2. And when you're taking data, you're taking acceleration values off of velocity graphs. What we're doing is we're setting up this modified Atwood machine where we have a cart on a table. We're going to call it MC, the mass of the cart. And it's connected to a, uh, a string that's running over a pulley. And we got a hanging mass we're calling MH, the, the hanging mass. Then we have a motion detector watching, which I'm labeling MD. That's sending out ultrasound, um, high-level sound waves that are echoing off of the cart and then bouncing back and being read by the motion detector. And it is telling the position of the cart and making a graph on a LabQuest screen that is a velocity versus time graph. When we take the slope off of that graph using a best fit line, it's the slope of the best fit line, that slope gives us a measured value for our acceleration. We have to kind of modify. We're looking at sigma f x equals m a x. And what is the x? That's the horizontal dimension, but that looks a little differently when you're bending things over a pulley. So our, our x and y axes kind of look like this. So that, let me draw a little better. So we have a x axis that gets bent over the pulley, and then a y axis that would be like here, and that would be up and down for the MC. When we identify all the external forces on the system, we look at MC and MH as a system, we identify these forces, we have the weight of MH, so we'll call it FGH, the hanging mass's weight, and then we have the weight of the MC, FGC, and the weight of the MC is not accelerating the system, it's just being counteracted by the normal force, Fn, from the table holding MC up. We do have some internal forces, but they're inside the system. We have tension in this rope. What we say is one rope, one tension. So everywhere in this rope is feeling the same tension, pulling towards the center of the rope, just trying to hold the rope together from being ripped apart. These tensions cancel with each other inside the rope and don't act to accelerate the system as a whole. Hopefully we're cool with that at this point in our study in physics. What we're really wondering is, what are we going to do with these acceleration values that is going to help us to prove that Newton's second law really is true and can really accurately predict the future of this system? And so what we're going to do is we're going to predict the future first. We're going to take enough information to use sigma f equals ma to predict that future. How are we going to do that? We're going to need to know, okay, what's the force accelerating the system? It is just... FGH. The weight of the hanging mass is what's making this whole thing accelerate. Now to calculate weight, you're going to multiply the mass, MH, times the acceleration of gravity on our planet. And that, in our case, we're going to use a little hanging mass. And in our video, we talk about it. We're going to use a little 20 gram hanging mass. So this is going to be 20 grams, 20 grams. But we cannot use mass in grams we will not get our force out in newtons. So we have to convert that to kilograms, and that's going to be divided by 1,000. It's going to be 0 0.02 kilograms. So we're going to actually put this in as 0 0.02. And then we're going to use g. The most specific value is 9.81 meters per second squared, but we're going to use it as 10. And so when we calculate the weight of this hanging mass, it's going to be 0 0.02. 0 0.02 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, and the weight comes out to be 0 0.2 newtons. That's why we use 10 instead of 9.81. I didn't need to get my calculator out to get that. I just moved the decimal back over towards the 2. So that is the net force that is accelerating the system. There might be some friction, but we're going to use carts and tracks that are really nice, and they're not going to have any, we're going to assume that friction is negligible, meaning you can neglect it. And so the only force accelerating the system along that x-axis is the weight of the hanger, the weight of the hanging mass, which is going to be 0 0.2 newtons. And so 0 0.2 Newtons. The way I like to work Newton's second law is just to drop the equal sign 
and expand the left and right hand sides. Let's expand the mass. We're actually going to have the mass of the cart plus the mass that is hanging. That is the whole system that's getting accelerated. We're going to write AX because we don't know it. We're just going to find that value. And so we'll put in the mass of the cart. Our carts are 500, 500 grams. But again, we must use kilograms. So divide that by 1,000, and we have 0.5 kilograms. Plus, uh, the hanging mass is that 20 grams, which is 0 0.02 kilograms. 0 0.02 kilograms. And then we're going to find that AX. So we're going to leave it as AX, as our unknown. If you add 0 0.5 to 0 0.02, you'll get 0.52 kilograms for the whole mass of the system. And then divide 0.2 by 0.52, and you're going to get what I already see, you already see down here is a calculated value for the acceleration. Your AX will come out to be uh, 0.2 divided by 0.52 is 0 0.385 meters per second squared. So we're going to create a data table now to compare calculated accelerations. These calculated are what we have used the equation to find, and we are kind of predicting the future. We haven't even done the experiment. We've just said, hey, if we put these masses in, we're going to get this acceleration. And then we're going to actually do it and see if we get that acceleration. And we go back up to that lab quest. You're getting that slope of the best fit line, and you're getting your measured values. And so the best thing to do is to do a run, get a measured value, do it again, do it again, do it again. Do at least one, two, three trials writing those accelerations down each time. Now for time's sake, for you to finish out this video quickly, let's assume that I've done that, that I've gone through and I've done this and I've run it three times and I've got these check marks represent numbers that when I add them all together and divide by three to get an average, get an average, then they come out to be this 0.348. This is just, I made up this 0.348 just for the video here, and I'm just saying, let's, let's say that that's what we get, all right? So now what do we do with those numbers? Well, the question is, can we prove Newton's second law to be true? It looks like Newton's second law isn't true because when we used it here, we calculated a 0.385 meters per second squared. We should get 0.385 meters per second squared. But when we actually do it, an average over three times doing this, we get 0.348 meters per second squared. They're not exactly the same number, but are they close enough to the same number to say that it's all right, that they are essentially the same with a little bit of acceptable error going on, maybe a little bit of friction going on in the experiment that is not really disproving Newton's second law. How do we show that they're close enough? We do a percent difference calculation. And so this is where uh, you're going to do a percent difference calculation with your calculated acceleration and your measured acceleration. And so you're going to take your, your measured acceleration values and you're going to put them in here. And you're going to take your calculated acceleration values and you're going to put them in here. And then to do a percent difference between them, you average those two numbers together. And so you can see what I'm doing as I apply this math. I've got my pure equation written calced AX for calculated AX horizontal acceleration AX, minus MEA apostrophe D, it's shortened for measured AX. And I've got the absolute value of that with these two bars on the left and right. So it doesn't matter if I get a negative number. I'm just looking for the difference between them. And then do the average, divide them by the average of those two numbers. So I'm going to add the, the calculated here is 0.385 meters per second squared. And then the measured, which I'll write in gray, is 0 0.348 uh, meters per second squared. And so then I'm doing the average of those two underneath. I'm adding them together and then dividing by two because I have two values. And so then the average of those two, 0 0.38 plus 0 0.348, is 0 0.3665. Written down my last line of work there. And then I'm uh, subtracting them. When I subtract them, I get 0 
And so when I divide 0 0.037 by um, 3.3665 and then multiply by 100, get percent, I get 10.1%. And so we say, well, is that acceptable? Is 10.1% acceptable? Does that mean that they're too different and so Newton's law is broken and doesn't really work in real life? Well, what we like to do in AP physics is we like to say, well, you know, with the equipment we're working with, Around 10% is acceptable. Anything less than 10% is definitely acceptable in this experiment. Um, getting 10.1, that's on the edge, but I would say that this would be okay. You wouldn't need to go back to the drawing board. You have proven Newton's second law to be true. These numbers are not so different that they are not actually the considered to be about the same number. So you've done it. Good job. And now what you've done is if you're, look, if you're doing the AP Physics 1 investigation number 2, you've just done the pre-lab part 1, the control run. And now you're going to add mass for part 2A. You're going to add mass to the cart and make MC more. Then you're going to add mass to the hanging mass for part 2, part B. And, and uh, you're going to recalculate these values and predict the new acceleration and then measure that and see if your measured accelerations consistently come out so that Newton's second law consistently pro is proven true over and over again. All right, that is the physics. You're the physicist, so get out there and start experimenting. Have some fun. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.